Hello, this is Will Your Werewolf, and this is Werewolf the Podcast, and this is episode 14, and this is just a simple story about killing a man. He is living each second in fear of his life. He has never felt this alive. In the proximity of death, life seems so precious and so important. Nothing else matters. He must survive. He must. He thinks of the family that he now detests. His fat failure of a wife he has begun to hate and his spiteful, spoiled sprogs. For the first time in many years, he wants to be with them and seek comfort in them, take them into his arms and love them again. He prays to a God he's not bothered for, oh, at least a decade to help him. He will be a better husband and father. Just God let me live. I will offer my life to you in supplication. Tears stream down his damaged face. He tries to hide his heavy breathing and makes himself as small as he can as he hides behind a large trunk of a Scots pine. His breath is rising from him as a fine vapour in the cold of the evening. The woodland creatures around him slip into silence. They take positions as if in a grandstand to watch what happens to this wretch. If only squirrels ate popcorn, they would be dipping in their respective bags right now. Would it be salty or would it be sweet? He listens intently for me. His poor senses cannot distinguish any movement or any sign of me as I walk through the silent dark. I reach out for him from the opposite side of the tree and grab the man's skull. I pull him back bodily to the living wood. His feet leave the ground and his head smashes into the trunk. I pin it there. He tries to turn his face away from the bark as I grind it slowly into its solid surface. The man screams and tries to push himself away from the tree, his hands scrabbling against the wood, ripping chunks of flesh and the fingernails from his digits. I hold him there his feet dangling off the floor like some poorly worked marionette. The rough surface of the wood acts like an organic cheese grater, rending the flesh from his skull randomly, but creating a very pleasing pattern of scratches and tears. This making of the visual runs in perfect synchronicity with the agonised cries. I just enjoy the moment as is, but he soon starts to weaken in his fight to escape and the moment becomes... Less fun. To improve the sensations for him and myself, I then squeeze him harder to the wood as I walk around it to stand in front of him and turn his head to look at me full in the face. The skin on his is ripped and bloody and beautiful. His top lip is torn, wrenched and hanging limp. Gouges run both down and across his face from his attempt to take his flesh whole from the bark. His eyes are closed tight to protect them. But they will open soon to see me. And then the fun will start once again. I shake him, but he only closes his eyes tighter and whispers the Lord's Prayer as he dangles from my bloody hand. He is a mess with the damage done. I have given him a lovely fake smile as if he was actually happy in his torture. He gulps down breaths and blinking many times bravely opens his eyes and looks at my wolfy features. His eyes widen in disbelief at the evidence in front of him. No! Escapes his torn lips in a whisper. I start to snarl and growl at the man's face. He dribbles and snivels, shaking and hiccuping. I open my jaws wider and then wrap them slowly around his head. My canines touch the surface of his skin gently. I slowly apply pressure and bite into his skull. He squeals and wriggles in my grasp as Millimetre by millimetre, I bring my jaws together. Each canine now pierces the surface of his flesh, sinking through the skin. They pass through the fascia of the muscles and into the vascular tissue. The blood flows freely into my mouth. The iron taste combined with its warmth tantalises my taste buds. 
I close my eyes, focusing on the flavours and the screams of the man as he dies. He fights not to give his life too easily. He kicks and strikes at me ineffectually, the teeth continuing their undeniable journey to where they will meet in this one's finality. The carnassials now start to slice into the flesh of his cheeks. More pain racks his body and his muscles tense in response. He lets out his distress in a garbled yell. The canines touch the bone of the skull as I continue the bite, which is somewhat like a tender kiss. A kiss that I offer this man at his last. A final moment of passion was given to him in his death. I feel like I'm drinking in his soul as he allows it to enter my digestive tract. He is close to the end now, close to the point of no return. His struggles become more energetic as he feels that this is end. This is end and it is near. I continue the slow death kiss. My teeth pass through his sinuses. There are moments of frantic movement which slowly dwindle to a stop and he goes silent, limp and then still. I continue the bite and feel the bony plates of the skull cracking and crunching as my teeth come together through the soft mush of his brain. His life is gone. His soul is mine. Another to add to the lists of the hundreds I have taken, and now I own. I drop him to the floor. Another useless one is gone. His physical vehicle is now dead, and I have no other use except to fuel the others in life's food web. I smile and think of the last few minutes of pleasure as I settle to eat my share, leaving much for the insects and the worms to return to the earth. Thanks for listening. Bye.